الحمد للہ وسلات وسلام علی رسول اللہ وعلا علی وصحابی اجمعین اما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولقد یسرنا القرآن للذکری فحل میں متقر رب شرلی صدری ویسرلی امری وحل العبدت من لسان یفک و قولی My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you. The topic of this evening's talk is Al-Quran should it be read with understanding. The glorious Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, which was revealed to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The glorious Quran is the most positive book in the world. It is a proclamation to humanity. It is a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It is a guide to the erring. It is a warning to the heedless. An assurance to those in doubt. It's a solace to the suffering. And it is a hope to those in despair. How is it possible to derive all these benefits of the Quran without reading the Quran, without understanding the Quran, without pondering over the meaning of the Qur'an and without implementing the Qur'an in your life. Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> the glorious Qur'an is the most widely read book in the world. But unfortunately, it is also the book which is most widely read without understanding. Because the majority of the Muslims read the Qur'an without understanding, that's the reason the contact, the benefit that the Muslims derive from the Qur'an, it has decreased. The touch of the Muslims with the Qur'an has declined. Imagine, if a person comes to the Qur'an and he goes away empty-handed, hearts untouched, soul unmoved, and the life unchanged. What a tragic misfortune it is. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 110, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhridat linnas. O ye Muslims, ye are the best of people the world for mankind. Because we enjoy what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. Allah is calling us the Muslims, the Khaira Ummah, the best of people evolved for humankind. And the reason He's giving us is because we enjoy what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. If we Muslims, Read the Quran with an understanding. How can we enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong? And if we do not enjoy what is good, and if we do not forbid what is wrong, we are unfit to be called as Muslims. We are unfit to be called as Khaira Ummah. So if we want to be called as Khaira Ummah, if we want to be Muslims, we have to read the Quran with understanding so that we can enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong. The Arabic called Quran is derived from the Arabic word kara, which means book. It's also derived from the Arabic word ikra, which means to read, which means to recite, which means to proclaim. How can we proclaim the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without understanding the message? And another title given to Quran is Furqan. That is the criteria to judge right from wrong. We can only judge between right and wrong, 
if we understand the message of the Quran. Without understanding the message of the Quran, it's not possible that we can use the Quran as the Furqan, as the criteria to judge between right and wrong. Let's analyze today the various excuses given by us Muslims for not reading the Quran with understanding. The most common excuse is we do not know Arabic as a language. Today, the world population is approximately 6 billion and about 20 to 25% of the world population are Muslim. About 1.3 to 1.5 billion Muslims are there in the world. And out of the Muslim population, approximately 15% are Arabs. And there are very few Arabs, there are very few non-Arabs who understand Arabic as a language. So amongst the Muslim population, more than 80% of the Muslims, they don't understand Arabic as a language. So the most common excuse that we Muslims have to read the Quran with understanding is we do not know Arabic as a language. When a human being is born, he does not know any language. The child, he initially learns the mother tongue so that he can converse with the family members. Later on, he may learn the language of the society so that he could communicate with the people around him. He may learn the language in which he is educated. Almost all the human beings, they at least know two or three different languages. Some know three to five languages. Some are linguists. But most of the human beings, almost all, they at least know two to three different languages. <clears throat> Isn't it a requirement that we should know the language in which our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed His last and final message, the glorious Quran? Isn't it a must? that we Muslims should learn Arabic as a language to understand the Qur'an.